Say again what the track was. Please, focus. Well, the, the track was, was Manu Chao, and uh, that was um, uh, from Clandestino, and um, basically Scar, and uh, I thought it was fantastic, really lovely. I, I agree, very, very, very good track. I, I should mention as well, that this is Phonic FM uh, on 106.8 or www.phonic.fm. So I've been carried away with the conversation, I forgot to mention that, which we, we need to do every <laughs> so often. <laughs> Um, and we're talking about the Neo Replicant show, which is in the Phoenix at the at the moment, and is here till I think January nineteenth. And uh, there's different topics come up while while the, while the music's on. So I'd, I'd just like to ask Fabian again. You, you've me you're mentioning about the the, the the design aspect of it, and you've you've mentioned design as well. Whether this is art or whether it's on the sort of borders of design, a lot of the issues. And you you pointed out that. Most processes are taking away from something, from stone or something like that, whereas the, the design process is, is additive. That yes, yes, this is the big... Uh, um, the, the, the exhibition, a Neo Replicant exhibition, is, is um, supported by uh, the Centre for Additive Layer Manufacturing at mm -hmm. Exeter University. Now, additive layer manufacturing, oh, what a mouthful. Um, what, what, what they're make, pointing out is that instead of, of um, traditional production where you have something like a billet of steel um, and you, you, you take, take material off to find the shape inside, like a sculpture like Michelangelo with a block of marble or something, instead you, um, with additive manufacturing, 3D printing, you're actually building it up layer by layer. Now, um, what is going to happen is that designers, especially for products and engineering and for, say, um, in the medical world, for artificial limbs or hip joints, um, they're going to take advantage of the fact that you can build up from the in, you, you can design from the inside out. So in traditional manufacturing, if you take, a, say, a bicycle wheel and you have the hub, and inside the hub you've got um, ball bearings and so on, with 3D printing, you can actually make the entire hub with the ball bearings inside already <laughs> so that you don't have to make separate bits and assemble them. You actually make it all in one piece. Now, you can imagine, if you, if you stop and think about that, um, it means that from the design point of view, you're no longer designing the separate parts. Hmm. You're going straight in to design the overall piece. That is a different philosophy of design. And the way engineers and designers are trained uh, these days... Um, uh, they, they aren't trained for that approach. So um, all I'm saying is that there is a huge scope for um, what 3D printing, additive manufacturing, uh, brings into play, and we haven't seen anything yet. What's the expression? You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, it's <laughs> Ronald, Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Yeah, he, he certainly knew the phrases to pick, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and he made somewhat as well. And, and he did mashups, didn't he? <laughs> he? He did do some mashups. He was yeah. Hollywood trained. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Nick, w w do, have you not met, well, presumably you have, some of the, the other artists who've contributed? Do, do, do they sort of think of this as design, or would they? What sort of approach do you think has been used generally? That's a good question. Um, I think a lot of the artists that I was in the first workshop with felt slightly bewildered by the whole idea. Because obviously, like with a lot of projects, you, you'll come up with an idea first, then try and think of how to do it afterwards, maybe. And with 3D printing, you have no choice but to do that because, well, we did, because we didn't know beforehand how we could make anything so we'd turn up with some ideas not really know what how it could become and then be thrown these different methods for making something um, through the scanning or through just sketch up or combinations of the two um, and then we had to I think most people had to start from scratch again so I don't know I remember there's one lady, it's Gabrielle Hode, who did the, the hand gliding piece I mentioned yes. not too long ago. She she tweeted about a week and a half ago. No, it was, it was a week, about a week and a half before the show, sorry, um, saying she's not sure what to do with this, this 3D print she's made because she was expecting it to just be, not be an object. And I thought that's a good point. I never thought through how would it end up on the plinth because we all had to get our heads around how you actually made a 3D print to start with 
not thinking it's a normal sculpture as such. So whether I think it was it was we were all on the boundary between designing and creating an artwork too. I'm not sure where where so we. So sorry, I haven't, I haven't really understood what was what how how was it surprising for her when she, when it arrived? Well, her piece is it's it's the the physical realization of a hand glider's flight. Um, so it's it looks like a roller coaster upside down and it works as an object floating in space but how do you then present that was her was her her, her quandary at that point and she had to design a solution for that so I, I think I think all artists are they have to be a designer as well I think you have to be but for this show I think a lot of the design skills that we may have have to then come straight to the foreground because you, there's a lot of the engineering side of things that you have to get your head around otherwise it will just collapse a lot of the pieces that they needed structure behind them that uh, the guys at the additive layer manufacturing department had to you know advise us on how to structure something so that it didn't fall apart or how it would you know be Printed right. in right. through the process as well. Yeah, so, yeah. It, there was a lot of factors to take into account, which made it a design project. I think you're right. Yeah. So would 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 you approach it differently now, given what you now realise? Um, I, I personally, I did approach it like a design project. I thought about what I had to use and what I wanted to get out of it, and I was trying to be very practical. I think if I did it again. I'd come at it more like uh, an artist should in a commission like this, and I'd and I'd, I'd try and sort of demand the impossible and then see what I could get. I think that's <laughs> I've, I've, I've done it the, the, the other way around to what I'd usually do in this situation. <laughs> right, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's all it's all something to ke to keep looking at and come back to, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. No, I'd like to I'd like to use three D printing again. Um, I'd just like to use it in the in a way that felt justified as well. I think that's. For this show, it, it works because of, because of the scale it's on. Whereas if I if I was to use it again for myself, I'd have to find it. I wouldn't want to do it just to create one sculpture. The sculpture would have to be used in three D printing for a reason, I guess. The like the same way. The only reason I'd use bronze is because there was a reason behind it. So it, it it's great because it's another medium that's out there. I think, and I don't think that's a bad thing. And it, because of how it's going to start being used, as Fabian's talking about. It opens up new meanings about what that material means, which for me is important in how I make work. Right. Well, JT, have we, have we got some more music at the moment? Yes. Yeah, we've got one, one more. Well, all right. For, for, well, what I think we'll try and do, and we'll, we, we hope this will work, is to, is to go upstairs to the actual show. And if, if have you have you got time to be with yeah, us, Nick? Yeah. For, so between now, so in the ne in the next half hour or so, we'll we'll try and have a look at the the, the different work upstairs, and um, comment on it as as it is, but also perhaps how how the scanning and printing and the design relate to to, to each piece or pieces which illustrate different things that that strike us as interesting. So um, I'm I'm hoping we'll be able to. To phone in and JD will keep the keep the music sorted as we as we uh, traverse the Phoenix. So what's this? <laughs> what's this next piece of music? Oh right, okay, we've got um, Buena Vista Social Club and um, Roy Kuda um, went to Cuba and um, he dug out a lot of the um, musicians that had frankly um, not been playing for quite a while. Uh, because of, of Cuba, um, its political status, and also the embargo with the Western world through the states. Um, but this this um, track is by Ibrahim Ferrer and is De Camino a la Vereda. And the, uh, why did I why did I choose this? It's because here's this chap who lives in a one bed a one bedroom flat, and uh, he's highly religious, and he hasn't sung for years and he is called in when he's going for his daily walk. He's 70 years old when he, when he sings this. <laughs> and he's go, he goes for a daily walk to, for his, his um, fresh air and everything else and they called him in off the street 
um, yeah, he, they had spoken to him earlier, but they called him in and he <laughs> got into the studio and sang this straight off. Uh, it's so impressive. Thank you. 